One of the things that drew me to oncology is the fact that both my parents are physicians, my mother is an internist, and my father is an oncologist. They're both now retired. And growing up around the dinner table, there were a lot of medical conversations. And as I became more and more interested in medicine, it was just interesting to hear more about how my father cared for his patients. And it was really inspiring to me and is, is really part of what motivated me to go into medicine and to oncology. So as a genitourinary medical oncologist, I primarily see three types of cancer, prostate cancer, bladder cancer, and kidney cancer. And within those types of cancer, I might see patients that have localized cancer that we can cure. And I also relatively frequently see patients with stage four or metastatic cancer that is no longer curable, but that we might treat. And so for the patients that have curative type cancers, we frequently work with our colleagues in urology and radiation oncology to provide multidisciplinary care. For example, for bladder cancer, that might include chemotherapy before surgery that then we hope is curative type treatment. For more advanced cancer though, if we can't get rid of all the cancer, we call that stage four, and then we talk about treatments that would be designed for disease control so that the patients can have quality of life without being able to get rid of the cancer entirely. So when talking about the types of patients I see, that is patients that have metastatic or stage four cancer, a lot of patients wonder about what things might look like in the long term. So the best success stories I would say when we talk about patients that have incurable cancer are those where we can prolong their quality of life with treatment and have treatments be tolerable for them so they can continue doing what they enjoy and spending time with their families. I think one of the really encouraging things about where the field has gone recently, specifically in genitourinary oncology over the last several years, is the fact that even if patients have a diagnosis of stage four cancer, which can feel very frightening and is worrisome to patients, there's been phenomenal advances in the number of treatments and the utility of treatments that we've developed over the last several years. So that we are seeing more and more patients that are living for several years, even with advanced cancer and they're having good quality of life and their cancer is able to be controlled. So I think that's a major advance we've had compared to how things were 10 or 20 years ago, which is very encouraging. When I think about patients who are coming for a second opinion or who might be considering a second opinion, we personally here, I always, and I know my colleagues, always encourage patients to get a second opinion if they're thinking about it. Number one, it can help and reinforce the plan that their local oncologist has already made so they feel more comfortable with the plan. Or sometimes it ends up that we have an opportunity, a clinical trial or some other treatment that their oncologist may not have been aware of or that the patient may choose to take advantage of. So the advantage of partnering with Washington University and the School of Medicine, in addition to Siteman, is the fact that we have fantastic opportunities for laboratory research and collaboration. One of the ways that I experience that strong connection is the fact that we run clinical trials. And so that's a major opportunity for our patients to be able to take advantage of cutting edge technologies and new treatments that they might not be able to receive elsewhere. Clinical trials are an area that can often be confusing to patients. It's important for patients to know that there are a number of different types of clinical trials. We have phase three clinical trials that are much more advanced in the stage of drug development that are looking at changing the standard of care and how we care for patients. Phase one clinical trials on the other end of the spectrum where we're testing new drugs and testing new approaches. And those are situations where it's a brand new idea, a brand new type of treatment where we're looking to see if the drug is safe and tolerable for patients, but it's not necessarily going to tell us how well it works. And so it's important for patients to know that distinction. Phase two trials are quite common, and that's often where we're using an established drug to see if it works in a new cancer type. And so we have all different types of these trials at Siteman and at Washington University, and we're able to employ everything across the range of these trials. I think one common misconception about clinical trials is that patients worry that they might get a placebo, that they might not get the actual study medicine. We would never give a placebo in a situation where it would be unethical. We always want to make sure that patients get the minimum of a standard of care medicine. So a placebo controlled trial would only ever be the most appropriate course if the usual treatment is watching or observation. They're always going to get appropriate therapy and we would never withhold therapy just because they're on a clinical trial. So I think that it's important for patients to come to a place like Siteman where we have clinical trials available because that's really how we move medicine and oncology and science forward. So if we think about how cancer treatment has evolved over the last 20, 30, 40 years, that's how the, all the drugs that we use have been approved. Every single step that we have in the development of cancer care has been because other patients have come before and have agreed to participate in clinical trials that allow us to build and improve and advance care. And so we hope that 
Each patient will receive benefit from the clinical trials, but there is also a component at some level of altruism where the patient is hoping to help patients with the same type of cancer as they have years down the road. The most rewarding part of my job is really seeing the relationships I get to cultivate with my patients. It's just such a special thing to be able to walk with them on this difficult journey and to know that I'm helping them along in one of the most challenging times of their lives.